Fabset presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Makers of Fab Set present each week at this time Harold Perry as The Great Gildersleeve, written by John Wheaton. We'll hear from The Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. Homemakers, when unexpected guests stay for dinner or between meal refreshments are in order, are you equal to the occasion? Well, whether the occasion calls for just a snack or for the main dish of a hearty meal, you'll find Pab Stet is mighty handy to have around. You see, Pab Stet is the delicious golden cheese food of a hundred different uses. Pab Stet slices so neatly and spreads so easily, it's grand for sandwiches or appetizers, or to serve with fruit. Pab Stet makes luscious, smooth cheese sauces that turn vegetables, leftovers, or chicken or egg dishes into real party treats. Pab Stet is just right for cheese omelets, rabbits, or souffles. Yes, and Pabstead is nourishing. It's a fine energy food and easy to digest. So always keep a package or two of Pabstead on hand. Whether your dealer has it in the convenient round, flat package, remember, just ask for Pabstead. P-A-B-S-T dash E-T-T. Pabstead, the delicious golden cheese food of a hundred uses. Let's join our friend, the great Gildersleeve, who has risen this morning with the conviction that all's right with the world. After a warm shower, a half dozen knee bends, a brisk shave, and a hearty breakfast, he stepped out onto the front porch to enjoy a cigar and survey his property. Uh, uh, October. I tell you, Marjorie, there's no finer month in the year. Just breathe that air. It's wonderful. Uh, feel that nip in it. Makes you want to get out and do things. Doesn't it, Leroy? Such as what? <laughs> October. Harvest time, frost on the pumpkin. Brown October ale. The smell of burning leaves. I love October. Uh, look at that maple tree in Mrs. Ransom's yard there. Like a beautiful painting. Uncle Mort, I believe you'd like any kind of a tree if Mrs. Ransom was sitting under it. She is? Where? <laughs> I was speaking figuratively. Oh, oh. Well, let me reiterate, Marjorie, that Mrs. Ransom to me is nothing but a neighbor. You believe in the good neighbor policy. If we were discussing trees, look at our own lovely elm. Look at the color of those leaves. Oh, glorious. Yeah, and you know what's going to happen to those leaves? They're going to fall on the ground. That's the first law of nature, my boy. Yeah, and I'm going to have to rake them up. That's the second law. (laughs) I hate trees. Leroy, never let me hear you say that about a tree. Okay, I think I'll go over to Piggy. Did you ever stop to consider what a wonderful thing a tree is? Leroy, I asked you a question. Did you? No, Uncle, but I'll do it the minute I get back. (laughs) Come back here. You do what? What you said. You weren't listening. I'm listening, Uncle. Miss Piggy's waiting for me. We're going to dig a fort. Dig a fort? You can do plenty of digging right here, Leroy. Just stick around. I have something to tell you. Uh, Both of you. Uh Uh-oh. What is it? Well, I bought a tree. Huh? You bought a tree? Certainly. What's so amazing about that? Everybody ought to have more trees. Why, one of the happiest recollections of my childhood is an old cherry tree we had in our front yard at home. I fell out of it once and broke my arm. (laughs) You must have had a jolly childhood, Uncle Moore. Yeah. What wouldn't I give to be back there now? (laughs) To be a kid again. And break the other arm. (laughs) Yes, sir. There are two things every boy ought to grow up with. A dog of his own and a cherry tree. Do you mean that, Uncle? What? About the dog? Uh, No, but I mean it about the cherry tree. (laughs) The tree I bought was a cherry tree. How did you come to get sold this tree, Uncle Moore? I didn't get sold it. I bought it of my own free will, fully dressed and in my right mind. (laughs) Where are we going to put it? Where are we going to put another tree here? Well, uh, uh, you don't understand, my dear. This is a very fine tree. It's a... They call it a giant ponderosa. Holy smoke, how big is it? Well, the man says they grow 30 or 40 feet high, higher than the house. What man, Uncle Moore? The man that sold it to me. He showed me a picture of it. Oh, you haven't seen the tree? Why, of course not. 
I hope you didn't pay him for it. Well, I... Uh... Come on, now. How much did he stick you for? Twenty-two fifty, and he didn't stick me. Twenty-two <laughs> fifty? Wow, you must have bought a Redwood. Uncle Moore, did you ever stop to think how many cherries you could buy for twenty-two fifty? Oh, you're very helpful, both of you. But the tree will be arriving today or tomorrow. We've got to decide where we're going to put it. Now, I thought maybe right out here in the front. Uncle Moore, this is the only sunny spot left in the whole yard. Well, that's good. Cherry trees need sun. It'll give us some nice shade out here. We can hang a hammock under it. Hey, that wouldn't be bad. Just lie here with your mouth open and let the cherries drop in, uh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, we might not have more than a few cherries the first year, but after that... Oh, uh, Bertie. Yes, sir? How are you on cherry pies? Well, I haven't had any complaints so far. Oh, uh, then warm up your rolling pin. Uh, Leroy, do you like cherry pie? Are you kidding then get the shovel. Oh, I like coconut custard better. Get the shovel anyway. <laughs> hey, Young, have a heart. Isn't this deep enough? Well, you've hardly scratched the surface there, Leroy. That isn't deep enough for a geranium. Gosh, I've been digging for half an hour. Here, give me that shovel, Leroy. I'll spare you. Yes, you show him how it should be done, Bertie. You've got to put your foot on it and give it to old heave ho. Yeah, that's right, Bertie. Heave ho. Heave ho, Bertie. Heave ho. You're doing fine. I'm going to have to stop pretty soon, Mr. Gilsleeve, and get lunch. Is anybody hungry? I'm not. Well, don't you think it's deep enough now, Uncle Moore? It's up to our way. Well, you've got to remember, my dear, this is no two-for-a-nickel cherry tree. This is a giant ponderosa. Yes, I know, Uncle Moore. And these but... things have roots. They've got to spread out. Heave ho, Bertie. Looks like I'm dug in for the women here. Heave ho! <laughs> Am I spelling you or you spelling me? Yes, Leroy. While you're resting, give Bertie a hand there. I, I don't want to suggest anything, Uncle, but how are you with a shovel? Uh, I'm saving myself, Leroy. So I know that. Uh, I'm saving myself for the hard work. We've got a long way to go yet. These giant ponderosas, you know. Heave ho, my boy. But it's up to my chin, Uncle. Chin up, my boy. Heave ho. <laughs> Yes, Bertie. It's just dark down here. <laughs> we don't think maybe we can find a farm <laughs> You're getting there, Bertie. You're getting there. We struck a pipe or something down here, huh? Mother Moore. Wait a minute, Leroy. Uh, what is it, Marjorie? Straight off the clothes. The tree's there, and they're sending it out. Oh, fine. Well, we'll have to get busy here and have everything ready. Hey, come on up, Bertie. Yeah, sir, if I can get up. Uh, Look out, you're starting a landslide. Uh, Leroy, give her a boost there. <laughs> Grab hold of the shovel, Bertie, and I'll pull. Oh. 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 Great day in the morning. I sure am glad to be out of that hole in the ground. Now give me a hand, up. Okay. One, two, three. Oh. Yeah. There you are. Thanks, Uncle. Now, Leroy, while you're resting, I want you to take that shovel. Well, here comes Mrs. Ransom. Mrs. Ransom? Oh, give me the shovel. <laughs> Break down and go to work, Uncle. Go dig your fort, Leroy. <laughs> Give me the shovel. Uh, good afternoon, Mrs. Ransom. Uh, lovely day. Just glorious. Hello, Leroy. Hi, Mrs. Ransom. Marjorie, honey, you're looking just sweet. Thank you. Uh, just doing a little landscaping here. I saw you. I saw you out the window, and I declare to goodness I was just consumed with curiosity, so I came right over willy nilly. Well, glad you did. Where's Willie? Oh. <laughs> Careful, don't fall in that hole. Oh, why, Rock Mountain. Mr. Gildersleeve, did you go and dig that great big hole? Uh, well, I had a little help. A little, he says. <laughs> well, it's a lovely hole. But what are you going to do with it? Make a swimming pool? Uh, no, we're going to plant a tree. A tree? Oh, Rock Mountain, then you did remember. Sure, remember what? 
Well, what we talked about under the maple tree the other night. Oh, that. (laughs) (laughs) I love trees, don't you, Marjorie? Yes, you can't go wrong with a tree. (laughs) You know, Shark Mountain, the boys back home used to have the prettiest customs. They used to carve the girls' initials in the trees. Sometimes they even put a heart around them with an arrow through it. Silly, isn't it? <laughs> Leroy, go dig your porn. I'm getting to like it here, huh? Well, I'm just on somebody else. Looks like Mr. Peavy. It is. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, hello, Peavy. Oh, doing a little digging, I see. Yes, doing a little digging. Mm, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I do a little gardening myself when I can. Uh, Peavy, uh, you know Mrs. Ransom? Oh, yes. Yes, Mr. Peavy and I are old friends. Yes, I had the privilege of selling Mrs. Ransom a back brush a few days ago. Uh, How's it working out, Mrs. Ransom? Well, I I hardly know that this is the place to discuss it, Mr. Peavy, but it has a tendency to tickle. Well, they come that way from the factory. You have to work them in. Stevie and I have one of those brushes. We've had it almost ten years, and we think the world of it. We wouldn't part with that brush for almost anything you could name. Uh, Well, I'm glad you're happy with it. Hey, Unc, here comes the old goat. Leroy, that's no way to talk about Judge Hooker. Hello, Gildy. Hello, you old goat. Mrs. Ransom. Oh, my, this is an unexpected pleasure, Judge. Hello, Leroy, Marjorie, Phoebe. Quite a little gathering. What's going on here? Mr. Gildersleeve is having a tree planted. Well, what is this, Arbor Day? I wish I could stay for the ceremonies, but I've got to tend to my marketing. Oh, must you go? Yes, but when I come back, I expect to see a shady bell right where that hole is. Goodbye now. Uh, uh, Goodbye, Mrs. Ransom. Goodbye, Mrs. Ransom. Goodbye. (laughs) Goodbye, Mrs. Ransom. You can have the shovel back now, Leroy. (laughs) What's the excavation for, Gildy? Are you going to plant this tree or bury it? No. (laughs) What kind of a tree is it? It's a cherry tree. Any objections? No. Of course, they don't live very long, but they'll probably live as long as you will. (laughs) Listen to me, you old goat. A cherry tree was good enough for George Washington, and George Washington was good enough for me. You tell him, Unc. Why, every house in this country ought to have a cherry tree. I hope this tree will be an inspiration to you, Leroy, to follow in the footsteps of George Washington. Do you understand what's expected of you? Yeah, you want me to chop it down? You know! (laughs) (laughs) Smart kid. He knows his history, Gildy. That's more than you do. Uh, Hey, Unc! Unc, here he comes! Uh, Who? The express man. Maybe he's got the tree. Oh, no, no. It would take a bigger wagon than that, Leroy. You'll have to send it out on a truck. All right, up here, though. Oh, Oh, he's stopping here. Well, maybe it's still down at the freight office. Maybe they couldn't handle it. After all, a giant Ponderosa at twenty-two fifty. Mr. Gildersleeve, gentleman, right there. Yeah, something for me. A sign here. Wait a minute. I was expecting a tree. They telephoned me from the freight office. You know anything about it? A sign here. But what am I signing for? I bought this tree from a fellow who came through here a week ago. Sign here, please. All right, I'll sign. But what about the tree? I paid a lot of good money down. If it's all the same to you, I'd like to know what... Oh, no, no. Now you went and signed in the wrong place. I'll have to erase it. Just erase it. Well, you got me so darn excited. Now, listen, brother. Would you mind telling me... Bottom line there. The bottom line. Your hand's shaking, huh? Yeah. Now, would you mind telling me what you're delivering, if anything? Tree. The tree? Where is it? Under my arm. Take it, will you, bud? That little twig? (laughs) Oh, isn't this awful? Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few seconds. But first, you homemakers have a big job to do these wartime days. Yes, your job is to see that your families get the foods that help make them strong. So you'll want to know about a food that adds extra nourishment to meals in any number of easy, appetizing ways. That food is Pabstet, the delicious golden cheese food of a hundred different uses. Yes, Pabstet offers many quick, delightful ways to add variety and extra nutriments to your menus. One way is with the smooth, rich cheese sauces that Pabstet makes. Just melt Pabstet in a double boiler, stir in a little milk and season, and you have a grand golden cheese sauce for vegetables, leftovers, all kinds of nourishing foods. 
Pabst Tet cheese sauce is mighty tasty, mighty nutritious, too, because Pabst Tet is a nourishing, digestible energy food, rich in milk protein, and it helps provide vitamin A and the important milk mineral calcium and phosphorus. So serve Pabst Tet often. Remember, it's Pabst Tet, the delicious golden cheese food of a hundred uses. <laughs> Let's get back to the great Gildersleeve and his cherry tree. The neighbors have left, and for half an hour, Gildersleeve and his nephew have been filling in the mighty hole they just finished digging. Alas, poor Leroy, I knew him well. Never mind the ham, Leroy. Keep shoveling. First we shovel it out, and then we shovel it in. Yeah, that's life, my boy. It seems a shame to fill up a ditch like this, huh? Would have made a swell elephant trap. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to trap the fellow who sold me this tree. If that Johnny Appleseed ever comes through here again, I'll hang him from the top of it. You couldn't hang a midget from it now, on. <laughs> All right, keep shoveling. You know, Uncle Lord, I think this tree's going to live. Oh, really, Marjorie? Mm-hmm. I've been soaking its little roots in water. Oh. Look, there's some green there. By George, you're right. Look at that green. Water, that's all it needs. Let's get it in the ground quick, huh? Leroy, scoop out a little bed for it. Okay. Uh, a young tree will stand transplanting better than the big one, you know. Yeah, that's right, my dear. Uh, stick it in the hole, Marjorie, and Leroy, you fill around it. Hold it straight, Marge. There. Uh, you know, all that digging we did will probably help us. Plenty of cultivation. That's what these trees need, and plenty of water. Yeah, now pat the earth around the little roots, Leroy. That's right. Don't pat it too hard. These giant ponderosas are very delicate. <laughs> you gotta cultivate them and water them. You gotta tend them like a little baby. Hmm. Nice little tree. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we ought to take it in the house nights to keep it warm. <laughs> Very funny, Leroy. Go get the hose and drag it over here, will you? We've got to give this a good soaking. Don't you think we ought to use a medicine dropper? A medicine <laughs> Go get the hose. Okay, okay. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, they just like to kid you, Uncle Mort. You are funny, you know. Oh, you too. <laughs> Let them laugh. We're lucky to get a tree like this for twenty-two fifty. Hey, the hose! Well, drag it over here. Oh, well, turn on the water. We'll squirt it from there. Here, give it to me. You go turn it on. Don't squirt it too hard, Uncle Moore. You'll knock the tree over. Go ahead. Turn it on, Leroy. It's on! Stand back, Marjorie. Here oh. it comes. Uh-huh. Turn it on all the way. I've got to turn around as far as it'll go. Oh, look at that. Is that guy next door taking a bath again? <laughs> Nothing comes out. Look at that dribble. Oh, you can make it go farther than that. Stick your thumb over the end of it, Uncle. Well, I'll try it. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Leroy, you knew it would do that. You didn't have to squirt yourself in the face with it, Uncle. I'll wipe you off, Uncle Moore. Yes, never mind. By George, that's the last straw. That's Summerfield for you. You try to plant a tree, you try to beautify the place for a little, and then what happens? No water. Bertie's been complaining about the pressure all summer. Well, she should. The water situation in this town is a disgrace. It's a fire hazard. It's a menace to the public health. And uh, it leaves a ring in the bathtub, too. (laughs) I'm going to go out and do something. Come on, Hooker, open up. I know you're in there. All right, Gillersleeve, what do you want? I'm very busy. Uh, Judge, have you used any water lately? I never touch the sun. <laughs> you come all the way down here to ask me riddles? I mean it. I'm serious. We can't get any water at my house. We can't get any pressure. It's a disgrace. Well, don't complain to me. Complain to Clanahan. He's the water commissioner. Uh, what's the use of complaining to Clanahan? He just sits down there at the waterworks on his fat salary playing pinochle. <laughs> <laughs> while the town goes dry. Man can't even plant a cherry tree. Well, don't holler at me. I don't play pinochle. Well, that's nothing to do with it. You might at least ask a visitor to come in and sit down, Hooker. I don't want you to come in, and I don't want you to sit down. I'm busy. Now, Judge, look. I've written a letter to the indicator of indicator about this situation. You have. Uh-huh, and I'd like to read it to you. No, 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 no. I'm positive it's a fine letter, Gildy. And you must be sure to send it to the newspaper. 
But if you want to get action with a politician like Clanahan, you'll have to get out and blast. It blast? What do you mean, Judge? You want to get up a petition. Go around and get people to sign it. A petition? You're right. In the voice of the people. Oh, that's wonderful, Judge. I'll get up a petition that'll blow his ears back. I'll write a petition that'll go down in history with the Missouri Compromise. Or was it the Mississippi? <laughs> Morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. You're next. Be with you in about two minutes. Thanks, Floyd. I won't require your professional administrations this morning. I shaved myself. But I've got a little thing here I'd like to have you sign. Well, the wife says I'll sign anything. What is it? Uh, you use a lot of water here, don't you, Floyd? I've got a petition. I'll read it to you. A quote. It's to whom it may concern. We, the undersigned taxpayers of Summerfield, believing that the water situation in this town is a crime and a disgrace, X-ray, X-ray. and a stench in the nostrils of civic pride, do hereby petition the town council... Hey, sh- What's hissing? Uh, are you shushing me? The guy in the chair under the towel. Yes, sir. Corey, are you working on me, Ranger? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Be right with you. Well, get this towel off your face. Yes, sir. Oh, hello, Clanahan. <laughs> I read your letter in the indicator last night. Did you? I used your water to shave with this morning. I'm just getting up a little testimonial about it here. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve, but I couldn't possibly sign a thing like that. Mr. Clanahan here is one of my best customers. I'm sorry. Come back later. <laughs> <laughs> well, if that's the way you feel about it. Goodbye, Floyd. I'll be seeing you, Mr. Clanahan, if you're around. <laughs> <laughs> You know yourself the water in this town isn't any good. It's not even fit to bathe in. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I bathe in it regularly, so does Mrs. Peavy. All right, it's fine to bathe in then. Well, no, I wouldn't say that either. It's a little slow coming out of the tap, and it's kind of brown, and it has its peculiar taste. Well, in, up, in other words, it's pretty bad water. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Look, Peavy, I'm not asking you to sign the Magna Carta. It's just a little piece of paper asking for water. I understand. Peavy, out in my yard, I've got a little cherry tree. A little tiny cherry tree. Pushing its tender shoots up through the parched earth, crying for water. Are you going to deny that little tree lit life? Yeah. Sign here. <laughs> I wasn't born yesterday. Look here, Judge. You're the one who told me to get up this petition. Sure I was, but I'm not crazy enough to sign it. Why, I'd as soon sign my own death warrant. I'll be bringing that around yet, you old goat. <laughs> A fine, upstanding judge. Well, you know how this town is run, Gildy. It's just too bad. I'd like to see somebody throw Clanahan out. <laughs> somebody else, not me. Yeah. That's your final word, is it, Hooker? I'm sorry, Gildy, but that's it. Very interesting. This is going to be very interesting. To whom? To a certain lady who shall be nameless, Mrs. Ransom. All right. If you're going to play dirty, give me the paper. I thought you'd see the light, Judge. You're worse than Clanahan. I'm doing this against my better judgment, you understand? You never want to trust that anyway. Thanks, (laughs) Judge. <laughs> Come in, won't you? Come right in. Yeah. Now, don't tell me you've gone and brought me something again. Well, not exactly. I brought you a little paper to sign. Oh, my goodness. I do hope it's nothing legal. Well, it's, it, it has to do with the water situation. Oh, dear. Is it bad? It, hadn't you noticed? It, it's terrible. There's no hydraulic pressure. Oh, there you go. I just don't know what you're talking about when you talk about things like that. I'm not a bit mechanical, you know. Oh, well, you don't have to understand it, really. All you have to do is sign it. It's a petition. Petition? Is that anything like a subpoena? Uh, well, not really, no. Because I never did know what a subpoena was. My my husband, Beauregard, was a lawyer, you know, and I never did understand him from the day I married him. Oh, but then he never understood me. Oh. But we understand each other, don't we, Strachmark? Oh, brother. (laughs) 
<laughs> Come into the parlor, won't you? Now, let's don't talk about petitions and pressures and chemistry and all that. Let's talk about us. Oh, well, I'll tell you. I've got to get this petition in before the meeting of the town council tomorrow. Oh, poo. All you men think about is business. I know, but uh, let's get it signed first, and then we can uh, uh, go on from there. <laughs> sign a truck, Morton. Really, I would. But Beauregard told me I must never sign anything without getting the advice of a lawyer first. Oh. Uh, don't you reckon maybe I ought to consult Judge Hooker? Uh, Hooker? Uh, no. Frankly, I don't think the judge would understand about this. You don't? No. You see, if, if this petition, uh, if, well, it all started with that tree I planted. Our tree, Leela. Our little tree. <laughs> oh, truck, Morton. You're sweet. I'll sign it. I'll do anything you say. Uh, wait, here's my pen. <laughs> After all, you're my air raid warden. I guess that makes it legal, doesn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. There. To Truck Martin with love from Leela. Uh, huh? <laughs> Well, uh, I mean, it's all right the way I autographed it. Oh, the town council will love it. <laughs> With love from Leela. <laughs> What's that noise? What time is it? It's only six o'clock. What's going on out there? Leroy, what's that racket outside? There's a gang of men digging in the front yard. In the front yard? Who told them to do that? Six o'clock in the morning. I'll find out about this. Hey! Hey, out there! Oh, it's you, Clanahan. What do you think you're doing? You complained about the water, didn't you? Certainly I did, and I'm going to complain about it again. You said you wanted action, didn't you? Certainly I did. Well, you're getting it. Wait a minute. Where's that tree that was there? What tree? Oh! <laughs> No, Leroy. Uh, what's the picture? Oh, it's super, Unc. It's called Here We Go Again. Here We Go Again? I never heard of it. You never heard of Here We Go Again? Well, I've heard of it now. It's got Fibber McGee and Molly in it. Oh, my little chums. Well. And Edgar Berger and Charlie McCarthy. Well, for heaven's sake, that sounds great. Here's a dollar. Take your friend. Wait a minute. There's a guy in it called the Great Gildersleeve. Never heard. Oh, that's me. What am I saying? Wait a minute, Leroy. I'll get my hat and go with you. Good night, everybody. Here we go again. <laughs> music heard on this program was composed and conducted by Billy Mills. This is Frank Bingman speaking for the makers of Tab Set and inviting you to be with us again next week at the same time for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. A word for all you thrifty women who are trying to keep the food budget on an even keel. The product called Kraft Dinner is just your dish. For Kraft Dinner gives you the economical way, the quick way to make delicious macaroni and cheese. Fluffy, tender macaroni, drenched with cheese goodness. With Kraft Dinner, you make it in just seven minutes cooking time. You see, every Kraft Dinner package contains a special fast-cooking macaroni and an envelope of Kraft grated so you can sprinkle in the cheese flavor in a hurry. And say, the family will go for this thrifty, speedy macaroni and cheese. They'll tell you it's as good as any you ever baked in the oven the old-fashioned way. Why don't you get several packages of economical Kraft Dinner tomorrow? Have it on hand in the pantry shelf. A main dish ready in seven minutes is such a help these busy days. Tomorrow, ask your food dealer for Kraft Dinner. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company.